Monkeys. That is the name of the band. I am not insulting anyone. That is the name of the band. M O N K E E S. All right. Um, that's a very interesting name for a band. Um, and I feel like, wait, haven't I reacted to a band called the Monkeys, but like they were spelled differently? Uh, um,. I don't know why I feel like I've reacted to a band or a group or somebody called the Monkees. But anyway, a uh, very interesting name f- to, to call yourself. Um, but you like it. I love it. Um, I feel like y'all know I talk about band names all the time and how important they are. Um, I don't know if somebody, if I ask somebody, hey, who are you listening to? And they said the Monkees. I don't know if that's the most appealing name but again they like it i love it but i've never heard of them before this is my first reaction as i uh, pull up the video here uh i've never heard of them know nothing about them but the song is called daydream believer and it actually has a music video so i'm really excited to see that because i i'm surprised because it looks rather old it looks like based off the haircut it got the beatles uh, Justin Bieber uh, haircut going I'm gonna say 60s but we'll figure out right now um, but let, let's do this quick research before we jump into it as always when we do our first time reactions we gotta figure out who we are reacting to so they were an American pop rock band formed in Los Angeles in the mid 1960s the band consisted of Mickey Dolenz, Davy Jones, Michael Naismith Peter Tork and Peter Tork um, spurred by the success of the television show of the same name. Oh, it's a television show. The Monkees were one of the most successful bands of the late 1960s with international hits, four chart topping albums and three chart topping uh, songs. They sold more than 75 million records. Oh, wow. I, I, again, I've never heard of them. Wow. Ew, that's uh, that's really impressive. Um. Okay. Oh wow. So so they were active from sixty six to seventy, then eighty six to eighty nine, then ninety six to ninety seven, then o one to o two, then twenty ten to twenty twenty one. All right. Okay. Um, they were signed to RCA Victor, Arista, Rhino, Bell, and Coljums. Coljums, I never heard of that one, but I've heard I've heard of a couple of those uh, labels. Music credited to the Monkees appeared in the sitcom and was released on LPs and singles beginning in 1966, and the sitcom aired from 1966 to 68. At first, the band members' musical contributions were primarily primarily limited to lead vocals and the occasional composition, with the remaining music provided by professional songwriters and studio musicians. Though this arrangement yielded multiple hit albums and singles, the band members revolted, and after a power struggle, gained full control over the recording process in 1967. For two albums, the Monkees mostly performed as a group. However, within a year, each member was pursuing his own interests under the Monkees name, rendering the Monkees once again a group in name only. With widespread allegations that the band members did not play their own instruments, oh wow, followed by cancellation of the Monkees, the uh, diminishing success on the charts and waning popularity overall, band members began to leave the group. The Monkees held a final recording session in 1970 before breaking up. Wow. Renewed interest in the Monkees emerged in 1986, leading to a 20th anniversary reunion. This tour concluded shortly before Naismith's death later that year leaving Dolans as the sole surviving member. Wow. Jones died in 2012. Torque died in 
Wow. Their genres are pop rock, rock, bubblegum, psychedelia. All right. All right. Well, yeah, it definitely, based off their look, it definitely looks Beatles-ish. Um, but, all right. I, I've never heard of them, but 75 million records, that's nothing to scoff at. That's very impressive. Uh, three number ones. I think it just said, what, two number one albums. Um had a TV show related to them, um, but I will say them not them not writing or making their own music. That's fine, right? Like that's the music industry. A lot of these artists don't make their own music, right? So that's fine. Them not playing their own instruments though. Them so they're like completely faking. Like if that's true, that is the first. I've ever heard about that on this channel. Again, we've we know we've you know reacted to plenty of artists who don't write their own music, don't you know, don't do anything like that. They just go in the studio and make the music, but they make the music. They don't fake even making the music. That's crazy. Um, but again, that's the music industry. I, I I won't act like I haven't heard of that, but this would be my first time reacting to a band that has those kind of allegations um yeah, that's, that's pretty crazy but yeah man let's check them out man let's see let's see what this is all about day uh daydream believer so we already know this is a number one i know that this was one of their biggest songs oh, wait hold on and we know this is one of their biggest songs so we kind of know that but we'll do the rest of the research afterwards now go now you can play It rained and I ran, wiped the sleep out of my eyes. We're shaven. That's funny. What beat was he on? Um, but I really like the song. It's actually the the composition of it is actually really really beautiful, um, and I really I, I like his voice. Actually, I really really like his voice. Um, but boy, these sixties, fifties, and sixties music videos with the lip sync it is so funny. <laughs> it's so bad. <laughs> but it's good, man. It's good, man. I honestly, again, when you consider um, just having a music video in the '60s, because I feel like that's like the first years of the music video, right? Late '50s, '60s. Um, to have a music video, you you had to have some money being pushed into you as an artist for a music video uh, in the '50s and '60s. So this is really impressive. Um, and then, like the set, like. Again, it looks, it actually kind of still look good, like for something in the 60s, like this actually, this this setting, like, and I'm going to assume this is a real studio, like this isn't green screen, uh, this is actually a really cool studio, <laughs> actually, just this setup, but uh, the song itself is actually really, really beautiful, I, I really love the, the tambourine effect along with the strings and the piano. It's actually a really, 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 really nice song. Um, so yeah, I, I like it, I like it.
daydream believer and a homecoming queen. I like that song. <laughs> so, I tell you all the time, you want to hit record? Appeal to the kids or the women. I could definitely see this in the 60s appealing to both, probably. Both kids and the women. It's catchy, it's fun, it's lighthearted. Definitely something I could see uh, appealing to the kids and the women. Uh, the song was composed by American songwriter John Stewart shortly before he left the Kingston Trio. It was originally recorded by the Monkees with Davy Jones singing lead. Single reached number one on the Billboard 100 in December 1967. Remained there for four weeks. Peaked at number five in the UK. It was the Monkees' third and last number one hit in the United States. Oh, wow. Damn, that's all the information they're going to give me? John Stewart wrote Daydream Believer as the third in a trilogy of songs about suburban life, recalling, I remember going to bed thinking, what a wasted day. All I've done is daydream. And from there, I wrote the whole song. I never thought it was one of my best songs. Not at all. Wow. I ever had them days where you feel like you just wasted it. Like, I, I've made it a point of mine because I felt like I, I kind of had a... I, I, I felt like I had a, you know, a lot of those days where I'm like, I did nothing productive today. I just sat here. Just sat here on my phone, played the game, but did something stupid. Like, you know what I mean? Just did nothing productive. And I, I've made it a point of mine to stop doing that. I've made it a very... I'm, I, like, I've... I've Push, punched it in my mind. I said, every day, whether it's learn something, experience something, accomplish something, you have to do something every day. So, uh, but I, I know the feeling. I know the feeling. Well, I, I guess that wasted day turned into a number one hit. So, you know, shout out to Jones. Um, John, excuse me. Uh, oh yeah, that's really all the info they giving me on this one. Um, so yeah, I like this song. So, pardon the hell out of me. I said it, I guess visually, I kind of, is what I meant when I said it kind of looks Beatles-ish, just based off of their hairstyles and like, just the era. But, um, sonically, I, I guess I could see a little Beatles in it, but it, it wasn't really, like, I, I wouldn't classify this in the same class as the Beatles. Um, it definitely sounds like it's the same era, but not, you know, and, and same genre, but it doesn't sound like anything that I think I would have heard from the Beatles. Um, but, and not to say that's a bad thing. Uh, I, I really, really like the song again, very fun, lighthearted. Uh, again, I can see it appealing to the kids and the women. Um, you know, just fun, lighthearted, kind of. I don't want to say simple lyrics, but, you know, just something that anybody could relate to and understand. Um, I really, really liked it. I don't know who the hell. I don't know. Who the hell um, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, but, yeah, great song. Great song. I really, really liked it. Um, and I'm trying to think. I feel like out of all the 60s groups and artists that I've been introduced to, outside of the Beatles, I don't know. I guess I, I haven't heard enough 60s for me to really start doing the comparison game. But um, I could definitely see from a commercial standpoint, just based off of this one song, I could definitely see them being a big band. Um, they had the look, they had the appeal, they looked very young, youthful guys. Um, again, they all kind of had that popular, uh, I call it the Beatles look. I, I forgot exactly what it's called, but um, they they all kind of had that Beatles look that, um, you know, really kind of personifies the 60s when I think of bands, just that haircut. Um, but yeah, great band, great song, really, really enjoyed it. Again, that 
those allegations about them not even playing the instruments that's kind of crazy now you know again this was a music video and of course they um they're lip syncing and going through the motions so obviously i don't think they were really playing the instruments right there but i mean if anybody saw them live you guys tell us right if, if anybody who went to a monkey's concert can you vouch that they played their own instruments because that's like a big deal to me I, I i've never heard again i've heard of that happening i've heard that being a thing but i this is the first band that i've reacted to while i've seen those allegations you know what i mean we've heard artists steal things from other artists steal ideas steal concepts uh we, we've heard of that, but we've heard people uh, I'm trying to think. What, what else have we heard? Um, that's really the main thing. People, you know, kind of covering or stealing songs, you know, uh, taking songs without uh, permission. Uh, and again, riffs and ideas and concepts, but never heard anybody faking them playing the instrument. Like we we haven't heard that yet. So, if anybody could vouch for this, or you know, again, you've been to a monkey's concert and can vouch, yeah, they actually played the instruments. They were up there singing. Like, please let me know. I'm I'm really interested in that now. Like that actually kind of caught me off guard. But yeah, man, I I really enjoyed it. Y'all let me know what else from the monkeys I need to check out. Clearly, they had um. A couple of more hits that uh that were really really big. So if you guys think I should check them out, y'all let me know. Quickest way is over on Patreon. Um, but if you leave it on on YouTube, I'll, I'll get to it eventually. I promise, as you all know. Um, like, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget that 75k giveaway. Until next time, with the monkeys. Peace. <laughs>